can be recorded. You do know that once you attend, normally when you attend the Founders Conversation, we send you a recap. And that wasn't working too well because some people's emails were blocking our email system. So we would show that the email has gone, has been delivered, but it is not open. So we thought to reach you faster and to give you access to what it is that we're doing, we create WhatsApp groups. So if you're watching and uh, you'd like to be in a WhatsApp group, there's going to be a notification that will come out to you after the tomorrow, after 48 hours, you'll get a recording of the video and the link that will ask you to join WhatsApp if you want. And you will choose which area you want to get in because we know that COVID-19 is not gonna be here forever. So we are keeping the, our locations the way they are. We have Nairobi in three centers. We have Nairobi in city center. We have Nairobi on Mombasa Road. And we also have Nairobi in Kilimani area. And then we have Nakuru and Mombasa. So again, welcome to Founders Conversation. The conversation continues on four core principles of profit first. So you will get the recording, you'll get these videos as well. So a conversation, I find that many times when people come to these sessions, they have an expectation that is not what we are offering. So SME's Founders Conversation is a talk. It's not a class, it's not a workshop, it's not a technical training, it's a conversation. And the dictionary tells us that a conversation is a talk, especially an informal one, like the one we are having this morning and the one we have every Thursday. And we have been having these conversations every week since 2015. So we are almost perfecting the act, all right? So this is not a workshop, it's not a class, it's not a technical discourse, it's a conversation. And a conversation is, an, is a talk, an informal talk between two or more people in which news and ideas are exchanged. And today we are online and I'm going to find a way, to, you know, a way for you to exchange ideas with me. And it's important for you to understand it's not a workshop. And there are people who come and they say, my business is much older. The information at that event was very shallow. That's not what I'm looking for. And that's understandable because it's a conversation. If your business is older than the businesses in the, uh, the, businesses in the room, as an SME, you should share your experiences. You should share what you're doing. The facilitator is just a facilitator, somebody to facilitate the conversation so that the SMEs in the room can share their experiences, can share what, you know, how the business is going. So let's see here. Somebody has their hand up. So I'm just going to quickly, somebody sent a message. I'm going to quickly see here. Uh, so Monica Gitonga viewing from Nairobi. Welcome. Thank you very much. I kindly ask that you put your, you put your microphones on mute so that there's no feedback as it will carry through in the recording. So today, this is going to be me, Frida Owinga. I'm the founder of Passion Profit. I started Passion Profit in 2009. And the reason I started Passion Profit was because people were coming to me asking me for work. And I had just come back from the country after living 10 years in the US. And I looked at the people that were asking me for work and I asked them, why are you asking me for work? I've also just landed, I don't have a job. And they started saying that um, they, they didn't like the job they were in. They just needed a job to pay bills. And I was like, seriously, you're more important than paying bills. How can you just have a job for paying bills? And if you're listening to me, you are more than bills. You have the brilliance, you have the passion, you can have the drive to be, do, have anything that you want. So that's why we have these conversations. And every time we have these conversations, we have, uh, just let me mute somebody here. All righty. Every time we have these conversations, you get an insight, you get an aha moment. Conversations can only give you a hands, but if you want more in-depth structured mentoring or you know, any kind of learning and development program, we do have those. And that is something you can ask for either by going to our website or asking the facilitator at your center or asking me at the end of the session if we have time. So today we'll continue the conversation on profit literacy, and I'll be sharing with you how to make a profit from every sale. At the end of my session, we'll have a representative from SBM Bank, Margaret Kimani. She's the head of women and youth banking. 
And Margaret will be sharing with us today how to access SDM, how to open an SDM account, the different accounts that they have. Because the process that we're talking about today, the Profit Fast methodology, requires that you have five different accounts. Most of us have just one account. You need to have two at least. You need to have one for the company and one your personal one. But most people have one account. And that's the account that all the money goes into, whether it is your MPESA or a current account. And that's why you see on the left here, it is one account, the revenue account. But as Profit First, we encourage you to have four other accounts. And many people ask, Frida, how can I have four other accounts? The good news is SBM Bank can give you four other accounts and they can be called twin accounts. And you can have a standing order from your revenue account and put X amount for profit, X amount for honest pay, and that is a percentage of every amount of money that comes into your account, and a percentage to go for taxes. We know that taxes, the 16% VAT, so if you're, if, you're va if you're vertical, you charge that. So but every time you're paid, that goes aside, so that when it's time to make that payment, you're not left stranded. And then we also have operational expenses. And this is a very high level overview before you begin using this system, we need to do an audit on your accounts to see how your cash flows, to see the rhythm that you have established currently, and then we can help you establish a profit fast rhythm. So as we carry on, I'd like to take a poll and I'm going to, I'm going to post the poll on the, I'm going to post the poll on the screen and then I'll ask that you answer and we see what happens. Because remember, this is a conversation and a conversation is an informal talk between two people. It's not a workshop, it's not a class, it's not a, it's, what else do we go for? It's not a training, it's a talk. The reason I say this over and over again is to manage your expectation. We are here to exchange ideas, we are here to exchange experiences. As Passion Profit and SFA, SME Founders Association, our goal is to help SMEs grow and succeed. And we know that Technical workshops are great, but between the workshops, you need continuous support to grow. So here we go. I'm launching the poll. And the poll says, is your business profitable? You can answer yes. Just click. I think it has popped up on your screen. Uh, just click and say yes. If it's yes, okay, I see some yeses coming in. Very good. Don't worry, I won't see who said yes and who said no. There's one person who has said doesn't know. Very well, very well. Thank you so much. Nine people have voted. Come on. Well, good job, good job. 11 now. We are at 12 people. I really appreciate if you all vote so that uh, we can see what is going on amongst ourselves. All right. So, so far, we are 22 people in the conversation. Three people say yes, they are profitable. Seven people say no, and three people say I don't know. So far, 14 people have voted. I'm going to allow a little more time for more people to vote so that we can have an exciting conversation. The thing about business is I found that business is complex. There's no perfection in business. Until the day a lot comes back for us or until the day the world ends, we will always be growing, and the, the purpose of life is growth and we grow through challenges. So the challenges you experience are not necessarily a bad thing. They're just a sign that you are growing, but you don't know what next to do. And when you don't know what next to do, you ask for help. Entrepreneurs are very bad at asking for help because they think when they ask for help, they have failed. But when I have learned to ask for help and I ask for help all the time. So as an entrepreneur, be comfortable asking for help be willing to keep changing so you can keep growing. It doesn't mean that you change your vision, but your strategies can change. Passion Profit has been doing the same thing since 2009. We have grown, our programs have grown. There are some things we, we are still doing. They have changed in the way that we do them. The conversation, for instance, we, do the, we used to charge for the conversation. Now it is free, courtesy of SBM Bank. We are able to meet at different centers. So that has remained the same. The membership network has remained the same, and I'll talk about that some more. So if you're looking for more structured help, remember this is a conversation, and there's another space 
where you can get the structured help. So just before I close the poll, I see there's somebody trying to chat me here, all right? I see there's people that have logged in. Thank you so much for logging in. We have Nairobi Art Life, Nairobi City Center, and lots of Mombasa. Thank you so much. So before I move on, we are 25 people in the conversation, and I'm happy to let you know that uh, eight people are profitable. So we can put our hands together for the eight. No, eight people are not profitable. So let's put our hands together for everyone anyway for participating. Eight people are not profitable. Five people have said yes, they are profitable. Six people have been honest and said, I don't know. And that is a, there's neither right or wrong answer. It is what it is. And if you want to be profitable, tune in and I will let you know how. So at Passion Profit, we are sticklers for simplicity. And uh, let me just make sure I can see the clock here so that... Uh, when it's time, okay, I have put my alarm. So when it's time for Maggie to change, I will let her know. So let's see the time, it's 8.49. So the big thing about Profit First, Profit First is a book by Mike Michalowicz. Michael I don't know how to pronounce his name, but you can see it right there on the screen. It's a fantastic book. It's a methodology that we use at Passion Profit to help people generate reliable recurring revenue. When you become a member of the association, then we do an audit of your finances and help you figure out how you can start applying the Profit Fast methodology. I highly encourage you to get your accounts audited before you jump into this system, because there are a few hoops. I just give you the overview to get you excited, to give you the insights, and to show you that there's another way to make profit. I see your hand there. I, somebody is chat, trying to chat me there. Events planner. I see you. I see you, Lillian. I see you, Daisy. I see you, Clara. Thank you so much. We have some of our ambassadors on the line. An SFA ambassador is somebody who helps make sure that the center is running well. When we when you're not running a physical event, you will see them in your WhatsApp groups. They will encourage the you know, they'll encourage engagement in your group. If you have questions, that is the person to talk to the SFA ambassador in your group. In, um, in, on the Mombasa Road, Samir, St. Samir Park, we have Jacqueline. And uh, on, uh, I don't know, if, is Jacqueline on the line already? Uh, let me just put this here. Because, of, because we are doing the screen share, you might not be able to see everybody's face. But we, uh, on Mombasa Road, we have Jacqueline. In um, Adlife, we have, in Kilimani area, we have Daisy. And in the city center, we have Lillian, and Lillian also serves as the chief ambassador. The ambassadors are part of a, a youth apprenticeship program. If you're between the age of 22 and 30, and you'd like to turn your passion into profit by through personal leadership, understanding profit literacy, the four key focus areas that we use at Passion Profit and in the association, you go through the apprenticeship program to get to figure out what is your passion and how can you turn it into profit while working with real business people in a real business environment. So this is the profit first, uh, the four core profit first principles. Mike says in his book, and this is a very good book, I encourage you to get it. You can get it in the bookstore, you can get it in Amazon, or you can get it on Kindle. So I encourage you to get the book. So, all right. I'm, I'm, I will stop paying attention to the chat. So if you have anything, just put it, if you have a question as I go along, put it in the question and answers. We will answer your questions. If you, have, if you put a chat, I will look at it when I stop for a little break. So the four core principles, if you look at the, if you look at the green and orange box, the green box says sales minus profit equals expenses. And the orange box says sales minus expenses equals profit. How many people say the green box is correct? If you say the green box is correct, can I please see your hand? Just raise your hand up. And again, we'll see how many people agree with sales minus profit equals expenses. Thank you. All right, thank you. I see two hands there, three hands, four hands. Thank you so much. Five hands, thank you. 
five participants anymore? Six, uh, five, somebody, all right. Uh, okay, six participants. So we have six participants say that sales minus profit equals expenses. And my next question is how many say sales minus expenses equals profit? If you say sales minus expenses equals profit, all right, all right, all right. So that more people believe in the orange box, okay. We have 16 people so far, 17 people, amazing. So 18, thank you, keep them coming. Anyone? We have 18 people so far who say sales minus expenses equals profit. Well, I have good news for you. Sales, <laughs> sales minus profit equals expenses. The green box is the profit first philosophy. And with the green box methodology, this is how you make a profit in every sale. The orange box methodology is the regular accounting that gives us historical profit. And what do I mean by historical profit? It's the one that CPAs, our accountants do for us, and they, they give us at the end of the year and tell us you made X amount, you spent X amount, you're, you have a profit or you have a loss. And if you have a profit, 99% of the times it's not even in your account. So you're like, I didn't make all that money. Where did it go? You know, I used to be like that until I read the book, The Profit First Book. I've met with Mike and I'm going through the program to become a Profit First Professional because this is the product that we believe in for helping SMEs generate profit. So I'll share with you how it works. If you're in any of our centers last week, this is what was shared. So sales minus Profit equals expenses. In this methodology, it will force you to make sure that, number one, you have a target to know how much you're supposed to make every month. Number two, you have a budget, and a budget helps you to know how much you need to spend. Many SMEs do not have a budget, sadly. When I ask SMEs, how much did you make last month? Few know. Uh, a few know. Some don't know. If I ask any are you earning a salary? Many say no. And many say they're not earning a salary because of one reason or another. So actually, let's have some more fun. And I'm going to pose that question. If you earn a salary, uh, please raise your hand. If you earn a salary, uh, please raise your hand. All right. And I mean a salary every month from your business, the same amount, the way employed people earn because you are the number one employer of your company. I like that, I see nine people. If you earn a salary, please raise your hand. I saw nine people. If you, need, if you want to raise your hand, let me see it. So if you do not earn a salary, can you write for us in the chat box why you don't, 10 people earn a salary, very good. 10 out of 25, I think we're 25 now, let me see. We are 31 participants online. Good job, thank you so much for coming. So 10 out of 31 say they earn a regular salary. 21, anybody in the 21 willing to tell us why you don't earn a salary every month, please write it in the chat box. And you can address it to me so that everybody doesn't get to see it. If you don't want everyone to see it and I'll just read it, all you need to do is look for my, when you go on the chat, look for host and address it to me. All right, thank you so much for those hands. I see all those hands. I'm gonna put them down now. So please tell us, if you, if you don't earn a salary, why don't you earn, okay? So somebody said, I have not deliberately planned for the salary. I like that, thank you. I pay myself from the profit, fantastic. So another person says, my business is still young and too needy, Set, setting up structures and all. Okay, so I'm going to ask you another question and uh, you might not be able to answer me because we are not talking to each other yet. All right, I see another, I see another comment there. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, somebody says they don't earn a salary because of irregular income. And I totally understand you. It is dependent on how the month goes. Somebody says I used to earn a salary, then I employed an assistant and forfeited the salary. Wow, can you hear that? 
somebody else says uh, they're paid in commission from they divide into which they divide into expenses. So thank you so much for engaging with me. So you see, that is what a conversation is about. I get to share with you, you get to share with me. So to carry on, I want to, tell, I want to share with you that if you're running a business, you need to earn a salary. If you're working for free, then you're not running a business. You could be having a hobby. And I say that with a lot of love and respect. And let's see, somebody else has added a question. I have another income, so I only access funds to, keep, to complement the income. Uh, thank you very much for that contribution. Now, I want to submit to you that when it comes to money and our business, we must look squarely in the mirror and be honest with ourselves. Why are we running a business? And what, what are the expenses we need to cover using that business? Because when we do, we'll be better able to manage, I would say we'll be better able to generate consistent cash flow because we can start holding ourselves accountable and we can start seeing what do we need to do to get the money that we want anyway. So it all starts with a decision and a definition of how much money do you need to earn so that you can have a regular salary because nobody goes to work and doesn't get a salary. And if you go to work and don't get a salary, what do you see happening in the streets with the teachers? People get on the street with placards, all right? I once had a company that was doing courier service and uh, when we're doing the courier service, <laughs> I discovered the guy was doing his own things. We weren't making enough money. We were, we were barely making enough money to pay the, you know, the, the guy riding the bike. And I kept wondering what is wrong. And when we shut down the company, we still owed him some money because there was no money. So I said, you know what, we can't continue like this. The company is not making money and we need to pay you. And uh, so we stopped him. And then when we stopped the work, so I told him, you need to wait and we're going to generate some money and then we're going to pay you as cash flow becomes, you know, as cash starts flowing. He was not happy and rightfully so. And that's why I get shocked when SMEs tell me they're waking up every day, working very hard at this thing they call their business. They're very happy when they go to places, they're asked, what do you do? They say, I'm an entrepreneur, I am self-employed. But how can you be an entrepreneur, self-employed, and there's no money coming to you? So for a long time, I battled with that, and I decided to find out what do I need to do to generate consistent cash flow, not just for me, but to also help SMEs generate consistent cash flow. So what we did, this is one of the books that we came across, and we're applying this methodology to help you. And if you become a member of the association, remember I said this is a conversation. If you need structured help, then you invest for structured help and you get the support you need to fully follow the method, all right? You can also buy the book and try and follow it yourself. If you want to work with a mentor, it's an, it's an how can I say, it's an extra investment. I invest a lot in mentorship because I know I don't know everything. Even though business development is my, how can I say, is my core, I'm always growing, I'm always learning, all right? So the hands can go down now, and uh, I'll quickly share this, and uh, let me just check if uh, Maggie is online. Margaret Kimani, if you're online, please raise your hand so that I know. Uh, Margaret Kimani will be joining us from SBM Bank, and uh, I just need to know if she's here. Allow me to quickly check. Um, I don't see her here. Cynthia, if you're on the line, please help me call Margaret Kimani of uh, SBM Bank and see when she'll be joining us because her time is almost, uh, she will start, she's supposed to start at 9.10 and it's already 9.02. Thank you, Cynthia. You can let me know if you've had my message by sending me a chat. Thank you so much. Cynthia is our community manager and I believe she's on the line somewhere there. So how does Profit First work as we, before I hand over to Margaret Kimani from SBM Bank? The way Profit First works is number one, after when you do, when, before you sell, you need to structure your costing to ensure that you are putting your profit, your operational expenses, how your salaries and all that stuff, all right? And then when every time you're paid, which is the sales, sorry, you minus the profit. And 
what we do is there are five different accounts that I'm going to share with you. And we, the book guide says to use smaller plates. Just like when it says use smaller plates and it uses the analogy of nutrition, we are told that when we want to lose weight, we should use smaller plates and have smaller portions. So if you want to make more money, then you need to use smaller plates. And somebody says, when, they, when somebody pays them and they look in their account, they see they have so much money and they just, their mind just starts going crazy. What are the different things I'm gonna do? And stuff like that. So the first thing we recommend is that you have one account where all the money comes into, and then you have other accounts where you apportion smaller percentages for the things that that money needs to cover. For instance, honest pay, profit, operational expenses, and of course, taxes. So the second thing the book encourages to do is change your meal sequence. You notice that when people, the people who say they don't earn a salary regularly, they say it's dependent on income. And then they also said uh, when, uh, when they make a profit, that is when they pay themselves. And you see, your bills don't know that you have made a profit. There are some bills that need to be paid irrelevant, isn't it? So if you don't plan, if you don't, and by plan, I mean, if you don't know how much you're supposed to earn every month, to pay you, to pay your bills, to pay your staff, then how can you earn it, <laughs> all right? So the first thing is to figure out how much do you need to earn. And the problem is when you're trying to figure out how much we need to earn, we block ourselves with so many limiting beliefs. We think, uh, I can't do it. Okay, that is my time and to remind me to let go for SBM Bank. Uh, Margaret Kimani, when you sign in, please let me know you're in so that uh, I can hand over to you. So, so number one, use smaller plates, have an account where all the revenue comes in, and then smaller accounts where the money is subdivided, and I'll show you that on the next screen. The second thing is change your meal sequence. Don't pay yourself when you make a profit. Make sure that when you're costing, every sale has a profit, and when the sale is paid, you transfer it into a twin account, which you're going to get to learn about when SPM Bank representative tells you about the accounts. The other thing is remove temptation. When remove temptations, if you have one account and every time you check your balance and you see it's nice and fat, you start thinking of what you need to do. But if you have left only what you need to use in the revenue account, what needs to go in operational expenses is there, what needs to pay you is there. So there's no temptation of, uh, what do we call it, of uh, uh, buying things when it's not the time to buy. There's a word I'm looking for, but it has disappeared. So that way, the temptation is removed. The fourth principle is build a rhythm. Just like employed people earn a salary every 30 days, you can earn a salary every week or every two weeks. It depends on the cash flow. Right now, you have, your rhythm may say, I pay myself when there's a profit, or I pay myself when I pay myself dependent on cash. But with a profit first system, you will pay yourself every time because every sale has embedded in it how much profit, how much honest pay, how much operational expenses, and how much taxes. Uh, give me one second. I see some hand here, so let me just make sure. Uh, all right, thank you. Uh, all right, I'm going to show you the five accounts right now, Mercy. Thank you for saying that. All right, thank you very much. So we have received word that Maggie will log in at 9.30. So that gives us time to carry on. So I'm going to show you the accounts here. And these are the five accounts. Somebody just asked that. In the, uh, please mute yourselves if you're not talking so that there's no feedback. Thank you. Uh, it carries on into the recording. So if you look at the screen, here is the main account and the main account is called revenue. And I said revenue, all right? Everything, right now you have one account. And Profit First tells us to use small plates. So one plate will be profit, another plate will be honest pay, another plate will be operational expenses, another plate will be taxes. Now. When you read the book, first, the first thing you need to do is do an audit, 
And we help you do that because we have an accounting firm that we work with. And the good news is next week, she's gonna be here to show you how to apportion your revenue. So make sure that you show up next week. I'm not an accountant, but I know how to use this methodology. But Anne is an accountant and she has her own company. She's our accounting partner. And she will show you what, it, uh, how, what percentages should go into each place. However, these percentages are based on your cash flow. So you cannot just decide that just out of the blue start that 5% is going to go into your profit or 10% is going to go into honest pay. The book has a very scientific way of doing that. But you can start. One thing you can do is every time you receive revenue, you have an idea how much you need for expenses. Before you open your twin account with SBM Bank, you can push it on to, you can push it to, what do you call it? You can push it on to M-Pesa, I think it's M-Shuari, all right? So you can save it. So it is not in your view for you to use it all the time, all right? So those are the different, those are the different accounts. And I'm gonna, this is when Maggie is supposed to come in, but she has informed us she's gonna be coming in at 9.30. So I'm gonna pause here for a little bit and take your question. And uh, let's just see, do you have any questions? Because we have some time, you can ask questions now. The profit first accounts are five. The first one is the main account, which is your revenue account. And then you split it into four. A percentage goes into profit. Another percentage goes into honest pay. Another percentage goes into operational expenses. And then we have taxes. Remember taxes, we have VAT and the taxes you have because you have made a profit. And these are things that an accountant can help you with, all right? So I'd like to hear your questions uh, where, and also to know where are you struggling that you're not, where are you struggling when it comes to profit, when it comes to cash flow? I'll be able to answer those questions. So you can put your questions in the chat box and I'm just gonna look here. There's some questions that have come in. Thank you so much for joining in. This is Frida Owinga for those who joined after we had started. And I'm, from, I'm, I'm broadcasting from our office here in Nairobi, Kilaleshwa, Nairobi. And during the, during the time of COVID-19, all our meetings have been moved online. We normally meet in five centers in Nairobi. We meet in city center at um, SBM Bank Corner House. We meet on Mombasa Road, Samia Park. There's an SBM Bank there. And another center in Nairobi is at the Ad Life in Kilimani, Ad Life Plaza in Kilimani. So every Thursday at 8.30, we are there. But until COVID passes by, we are going to be online. We encourage you to invite your friends. If you have not joined the WhatsApp groups where we are engaging to keep you safe and healthy, let us know and you will be added. The number to call, I'm going to give you a number here that you can call if you want to be added on the WhatsApp group. And that is our community manager's, num community manager's number. She's called Cindy Joel, and that's her name and number. So that is the number to call. Uh, so let's see. Uh, if you have questions, please bring, uh, put your questions in the question and answer. I'm going to look in the chat, but please look at the question and answer and put your questions there so that when I answer, I think it will show on the recording. But let's see what we have here. The auditing talk is going to be great. When will we know how much to pay ourselves? That is a good question. The truth of the matter, Audrey, Audrey is asking, and you can say where you're from when you ask the question so you get some visibility. Audrey is asking, the audit, is saying the audit talk is going to be great. When will we know how much to pay ourselves? You need to know how much you, to pay yourself from day one if you're a business. And that's why they, we do a business plan. And with the business plan, we're able to do projections. With the business plan, we're able to do feasibility study to know how much money you will need to start. So the business of starting a business without any money is not totally the best way to start. It's a way we start because we want to put food on the table. But if when you're going to start a business, you need to have a business plan. And a business plan is able to tell you if your business is a bankable, viable business idea, and that is a program that we do called Activate. We take you through a program to help you scan the environment and make sure that you have a bankable business idea. And at that point, you'll be able to know, I need X amount to start, and this amount is going to, keep, going to pay my salary, it's going to pay operational expenses until money starts flowing, all right? 
And then the other question here is, um, a new business needs a lot of, Audrey says a new business needs a lot of investment prior and that could overwhelm any cash flow. That's denying the founder a salary at the beginning. How do we handle this? Very good thought, Audrey. The, the reason we feel that a business, um, we feel overwhelmed at the beginning of a business is because we start a business just with an idea. We don't do a, we rarely do a business plan. We rarely do a feasibility study to understand the environment. We rarely have a cash, a cushion of cash, all right? Maybe in one of these sessions, I will show you the 10 reasons why businesses fail. And one of them is not having enough money. Would you believe it? Many SMEs think that business is just supposed to generate money, but a business is a way to, lever to leverage your money by offering a solution to problems so that you can make more money. So starting a business without any money, there are some businesses that you can start, but if you look at it truly, you do need money. You will need airtime. You will need a phone at the least. <laughs> you will need a phone. Like now with COVID, how, how you can't get to people. You will need some money to do marketing, which is something we shy away from. So what I normally encourage people who are transitioning from being employed into self-employment is to consider that and save for that money or talk to friends. And they say, talk to friends and family and raise that money before you start. Because starting at ground zero is what makes it look like a really uphill task. So I hope that answers that, that question. And then the next question here, Zippy says, how does one determine how many staff to employ? How, to, how much to pay them? This again is a good question. How many staff to employ? When I started Passion Profit, I was alone, but I also had five consultants. The issue of employment, you can be innovative about your employment. And how to know when to employ, a very simple way, is number one, what needs to be done that is generating money that you cannot do by yourself? Because if you're generating money and you need help, then you should really employ. That is one simple way of knowing, all right? But the biggest thing is you do not always have to employ full-time, all right? For instance, at the at SME Founders Association, we have ambassadors. Ambassadors play a dual role. They are the, they're the center they're the center managers, and they're also the community managers of each center. And an ambassador is somebody on, in an apprenticeship. So Tuesday half day, they go through an apprenticeship program, a training, which ordinarily they would pay for. So instead of paying for the training, we exchange by giving them the training. And then on Thursday, they work half, they work 8.30 to 10, servicing the center. And when they make a sale, they get a commission. So you can be innovative how you hire and not just go the direct way of you know, doing interviews, getting hiring people to hire. Right now we have 20 people on our payroll for training, but these are people that get paid on contract when there's a job, all right? So not everybody on your payroll has to be paid every month. They can be paid for the work they do so that they have more time to do other things. And if you're listening and you're employed, you need to understand that you are not paid because you are at work. You are paid for the solutions you provide. The days when people, you just show up and say, oh, there's inflation, I need to be paid 120,000. You need to show value of 120,000. Are, are you proactive? Do you have critical thinking skills? Are you always asking questions instead of bringing suggestions? Learn to be, learn to be valuable. And it doesn't mean it has nothing to do with the how many papers you have in your CV. It all just has to uh, be observant, ask questions, be curious, Google what needs to be done, make suggestions, all right? Add value. Many times people are always looking to draw and then we start whining. Nobody has taught me this. I'm just by myself. You're not a child anymore. Once you're over 18, you are here to provide a solution. Look around what are the solutions you can provide. And let me carry on here. Another question says, some businesses don't require startup capital, earning a commission, and this fluctuate hence affects the cash flow. That is true, but if, you, if, you're going to be on a, if you're going to be on commission, I like the earning commission, because you see, you don't only have to, let me rephrase how I say that, you can have multiple streams of revenue. So earning commission is one way of earning revenue. 
And that's why I encourage small business owners to look under their skin. And when we're talking about your skin, we're asking you to look at your skills, your knowledge, your education, the things you have learned and been certified for. And we're asking you to look at your exposure. Which environments have you been in? I've been in so many networks serving, and that's why I'm able to run an association. I have served in so many networks without pay, all right? I find that today, anything people do, they want to get paid for, and that's all right. But you need to understand that there's a spiritual law, there's a universal law that says seed time and harvest will not seed. There's a season for you to sow because you don't have all the skills, you're still rough on the edges, you're learning on another one's dime, you will not earn as much as you want. But when you look under your skin, you are better able to start discovering what are some other things that you can do. I can speak, I can mentor, I can coach, I can do workshops, I can, I can do keynote speeches. So what do I do? I seek to get more of those coming in. How many workshops should I do in a month? How many places should I speak? How many corporate trainings can I do? So, but it's just the one speaking. So it's not like I'm, I have many, I'm wearing many hats. No, when I went under my skin, my strongest strength is speaking. So how can I package that in many ways? I'm here speaking to you behind the camera for free. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> but what am I doing? I'm sharpening my skill. You are getting help. I'm sowing a seed. It will bring a harvest for me. So where can you sow seeds? All right. So when it comes to cash flow, you have to be nifty in understanding what is under your skin and what do you need to do to package it to generate multiple streams of revenue. And that is the alarm. That is 920. So we still have, uh, let me see, we have 920. We still have time. Uh, let me answer some more questions here. All right, that buttering of services. There's absolutely nothing wrong with buttering of services if that is the way you need to go. Uh, the key thing is, I say there's two things that you need to understand, if not three. Money is a result of how you spend your time and talent. The more money you want, the more resourceful you need to be about time and talent. And not just your time and your talent, but the time and talent of your network also. And at Passion Profit, we have a session we call Leveraging Your Network. And your network is all the people in your network. That's your family, your parents. So if you don't talk to your parents because of one thing or another, you need to deal with that. Because unforgiveness is a showstopper. If you have beef with anyone, it really stops the flow of your network. So when we look at your network, we look at who are your parents? What's your relationship with your parents, your, your spouse, your siblings? your staff, the people that you work with, your suppliers, and all the other stakeholders. Because within your network, you can leverage other people's time and talent to make more money, all right? But if you're only looking at your time and talent, you will fall short every time because you're too small. Remember the, the, the story of the parable of the talents? The one who had one talent, he buried it. The one who had five talents went away, same time with the one who had two talents, but they both multiplied it. We are not given in specifics what they went and did, and, but we know that they were given at the same time. And when they both came back, they had doubled it. So how are you doubling your talent? How are you using your time? If you're broke, look at the clock. If you're broke, check under your skin. If you're broke, find out. How are you leveraging your time and talent so that you can make more? If you don't know how, join the network. Thank you. And uh, let me see, let me see here if there's a more question. Uh, if you have any question, please, uh, I see two questions. Uh, what, I see, how do you allocate honest pay in terms of percentage? Um, now, I said earlier that next week we're going to have our accountants come and walk us through that. However, if you go online and Google profit first, and Google profit first, I'm going to put it here on the answer for you. Google profit first, uh, profit first, and look at target allocation percentages. Remember, I said this is a conversation, and in a conversation, we are only able to exchange ideas and 
I'm giving you the idea. You need to dig deeper. If you want us to dig deeper with you, there's the opportunity to become a member. When you're a member, we go through the whole profit literacy methodology. That is how we monitor and measure your cash. I see one other question here. Um, and it's an anonymous attendee. He said, whenever I receive money from sales, I bank it all daily. But as it accumulates, I have been more concerned with stock purchases and paying other bills. I think to myself, my business is still growing slowly. This system has opened my eyes to be more strategic. Thank you so much, anonymous attendee. That's why we have the conversation so that we can exchange ideas, get insight to do better so that we can grow and succeed. Now, while we wait for SBM Bank to join us, let me see. Okay, so I've answered those questions, answered open. So let me say the questions are dismissed. If you have any questions, I welcome you to put them in the chat box. And it's 9.24 now. While we, while we wait for that, I can quick, I'll quickly show you the four key focus areas of mentorship with uh, SFA. SFA is SME Founders Association, all right? You'll see here, we have a website. Uh, please visit our website. I will get to show you the website before we end. And the four key focus areas are, number, the three things we do, this might be a little confusing. First, the reason we exist is to help founders grow and succeed. And grow and succeed, we help you to enhance your competence, your compliance, and your access to capital readiness. You must be ready to access more capital, whether through a bank, a family member, or a friend. And for you to be able to do that, the person you're going to ask for money needs to see that you are competent. Your being competent is just one part of the whole puzzle. I speak, I'm a business development mentor and coach. I've been doing this for over 20 years, but I can't do it alone. So I have a management team, so somebody asked about hiring, you get to know what is the kind of team you need to hire, who do you need to have in accounts and all that. We help you with the competence piece to help you see how you can leverage the time and talent of others. And then compliance, are you registered? If you're going to access capital, anybody that institution that's going to give you capital, you need to be registered, all right? You need to be having cash flow. I always say that if your cash is not flowing, nobody's going to give you any more, all right? So when you become a member of the association, we take you through a one-day workshop. And in the one-day workshop, it's not about teaching you stuff. It's about assessing where were you the last 12 months? Where do you want to be the next 12 months? We put that, and then we help you get 10 goals, write down 10 goals, and it's all in a system. And we, then we, out of there, we live with a one-page plan. I hope we'll have time. I'll show you at the end. And if I don't, I'll show you next week. And the four key focus areas are number one, personal leadership, helping you discover self-limiting beliefs and behaviors that sabotage your growth and success. Because the truth of the matter is we don't fail because of our conditions and our circumstances. We fail because of our paradigm, the way we think and what we think about what is happening to us. If you can be able to manage your thoughts, you'll be able to increase your treasure. If you can be able to manage your thoughts, you'll be able to increase your treasure. If you're able to manage your time, your talent, and your thoughts, you'll increase your treasure, all right? And then we look at profit literacy. How can you make a profit from every sale? I've shared with you the Profit First methodology where you have five accounts. And before the five accounts, how you cost will make a difference having a budget, understanding how much cash you need to run your organization so that when you're doing the budgeting, you make sure that you have, you have allocated the, five, uh, the four different plates, all right? Owner's pay, profit, uh, operational expenses, and taxes. So it's a form of cash flow and saving system because every time the cash comes in, a portion is sent into these different accounts and then you set up a rhythm for when you'll be paid. We know that VAT is paid by the 20th. When do we need operational expenses? People will be paid salary. And then you get to, you get to grow and succeed. And then the fourth, the fourth key area is impactful legacy. In impactful legacy, we discover succession planning strategies. Somebody asked about hiring. 
This is about hiring, about having processes, about having a vision that will live beyond you, all right? And finally, network, network leverage. On Saturday the 28th, we were supposed to have a big event. We we're actually supposed to have a big event in, Nair in Nakuru on Saturday on the 21st and in Nairobi on the 28th. But we are going to do one event on the 28th right here on Zoom. And you will get to understand how to leverage your network to grow your business in, during times of trouble. I will share with you what parts you need to build and construct and how you can have maximum advantage on your network and what network do you need to succeed? What support network do you need to grow? I will share all that on Saturday the 28th. Look out in your group. If you're in any of the WhatsApp forums, it's gonna be out there next week and make sure you sign up. When you sign up and you don't show up, you get a recording in your mail because you're here committed to your growth and success. Uh, allow me to check one more time. Well, it is 9.29. Let me just make sure that our guest speaker is here. Uh, there, there's a question here that says, uh, how long do I continue waiting for a business to make profit before giving up? You never wait for a business to give profit. You figure out why is it not giving profit and start doing the things that you need to do to make sure it gives profit. And it's not a question of waiting. It's a question of understanding what is under your skin. How much revenue do you need to generate regularly so that you are not waiting? There's no time to wait. We are always moving. And we're not just spinning our wheels. We are moving in a very intentional manner Every movement, every task should be tied to a goal to generate that revenue, to generate that owner's pay, to generate that profit. So I know sometimes people say it's not all about the money, but friends, if you're in business and you're not making money, there is a problem, a big one, all right? So thank God for this time that we have to, you know, to exchange ideas. If you're not making money, you can sign up for a one-on-one -on -one clinic and I can help you figure out what it is. Remember, a clinic is just that. You come, I diagnose what is the problem, and I give you a panadol. But if you become a member, you're part of the community, you have other founders to support you, you have a business mentor to work with you every month, they check in to see if you're achieving your goals. If you need more help from experts, we have business development experts who are our suppliers, you get that help. So let me see. So I hope I've answered your question. As I'm going to say, um, all right. So I'm going to quickly look here. So I've answered all the three questions. So let me say uh, done so that you can go away from my screen. If you have any other question, please, uh, please ask. Um, and we're going to go into the session of, um, all right. So I see a question here. And uh, Audrey is asking, tell us more about the membership program and what form it takes, how many meetings and through which period. Thank you so much for that question, Audrey. The membership is a mentorship program and it takes 12 months. When you become a member, number one, you, we, go, we take you through a one day workshop. And in the one day workshop, we look at Actually, we can quickly do this as we wait for, let me just make sure I see a, a chat here. I want to make sure that it's not a guest. Um, all right, okay. So sorry, anybody who needs to be on this call can only be on this call. There's no way we can be on the call and WhatsApp. I'm sorry, I've seen that question. I hope the asker of the question has understood. This is a one channel. It's a broadcasting channel. You can only access it through the link. I'm afraid there's no other way. So you can respond to that. And then I'm going to quickly answer this question, Audrey. When you, when you join the network, and uh, let, me sh uh, let, me, let me share my screen so that I can really help you get it. Um, I'm going to do, what do I do here? What do I do here? Well, we are waiting. You cannot minimize because you're recording. Okay, it won't let me minimize. So let's find another way. So I'm going to show you the system of what, when, because when we talk about having a one day workshop, many people don't understand what I'm talking about. So I hope you can still see my screen, not yet. 
I'm sharing a new screen so that you can understand how our system works. And uh, our system is by a company called Interaworks. Uh, what I really like about doing this on, on video is that we get to see all this stuff. So let me exit here and then I'll get you to go to, so I'll say stop share. If you don't see my screen, please, you will let me know mm. as we wait for SBM Bank to join us. So our, we, we, are, we have a partnership with a company called Interaworks. And Interaworks is a learning and development company based in Denver, Colorado, United States. And at Fashion Profit, we are certified partners to offer this methodology to corporate and to SMEs. For a long time as Fashion Profit, we went out looking for a system that can help us mentor and coach SMEs and at the same time be measurable, give them a dashboard so that we can measure and nobody say, this thing is not working. Because if it is not working, we look at your dashboard. Did you do the work you're supposed to do? So it's a no brainer. In fact, I have, it has given me the confidence to tell people, if you join the association, pay 72,000, 6,000, which is 6,000 a month, and at the end of the 12 months, you have done your work and not gotten the result, I will give you one check of your money back. It has reached a point I almost want to say I will give you with, a, with interest. So when you get in, I'm going to show you a random, I'm going to show you uh, a sample, a sample, what do you call it? A sample plan. So when we talk about the first day you come, we are going to take you through a workshop. And many people ask me, what are we learning in the workshop? We are not learning. We are reflecting and planning for our next 12 months. So the first thing we do, you'll be given a link, you log into the system, and this is what you will see. And I'll just, uh, this is somebody I was working with yesterday. I was showing them, uh, I, was, I was doing a demo of the system. So if there were, if there were, if they were in the workshop, the first thing you do, the workshop says, let's get started by following these proven 10 questions. During the day, we go through 10 questions. You will get to, you will get to know what you're going to do for the next uh, 12 months. So the first thing we envision, many SMEs don't have time to sit back and just think, all right? Because they're always running around, running around, you know? But this workshop will help you sit back and think, what do you want to see in the next 12 months when we are supporting you as your mentors and coaches? And you will come in and write it here. This guy said he wanted to run his company fully digitally. He wanted to be in the East African community and then to engage government for education purposes. When you're envisioning, as far as you can see, you can achieve. Whatever you imagine, you can achieve. What your mind can conceive, you can achieve. We are just here to help you achieve it to help you guide, to guide you, all right? So you will enter here as many answers as you want, and then we'll save and continue. And then um, the first question we ask you is, and then it's a process, it's a workshop. So you answer, the facilitator is taking you through the day. So the first question we ask is, what did you accomplish? And this person said that they experienced continued growth, New programs started, and they started talking about cryptocurrency. It's a financial company. They opened an office. They opened an office in a new country. They started to They had two international training opportunities. So you will also get a chance to tell us what did you accomplish. Many times we just think about the things that didn't happen, and we don't stop long enough to be grateful for the things that happened. All right. In the midst of COVID-19, we are grateful that we are able to gather all the entrepreneurs anyway. We are able to do one-on-one -on -one clinics if, so that we keep ourselves safe and healthy. So after you list your accomplishments, you say you save and continue. And we carry on like this the whole day. And you also get to list your disappointments. What are the things that you wanted to work that did not work? Discussion with government fell through. These are some things that failed for this person. So you'll enter, you know, what didn't work for you. The things that didn't work for you are not necessarily bad. It's just a sign that you lack the help or the time or the accountability, normally not the time, the accountability or support system to push through to the finish line. So we get you to look at the mirror and ask yourself, what did you learn? If you look over here, you'll notice the person's accomplishments are forming. So this is what the workshop does. As you're 
writing down, you know, as you're answering each question, is populating it for you. So you see the accomplishment, you are also able to see the disappointment here. And after you do that, what are the lessons this person learned? He said that they need to do more staff training because the staff had conflict. They were not always talking and, you know, aligning. You see, conflict is not bad. Conflict is just a sign that the image one staff member and another staff member is seeing is not the same. So we give feedback, we ask questions, we align, and we come back and conflict gone. So the, he just said they needed more training. So they need long-term planning. If they're going to go across the region, what is the strategy? And then he said, keep trying. So for keep trying, we say that he needs to be resilient if, so that he doesn't allow failure to stop him. And then once you do that, we come to a place where we look at your learnings and what lessons that you learned, and we help you come up with guidelines to support your future growth. For this person, the guidelines were be relentless. Remember, he said he should keep trying and not give up. He should schedule capacity building for his staff so that it gets done. He should assess risk and opportunities so that things don't fall through the cracks. So once we do that, we save again. And of course, we take a longer time as we are working with you. And notice here at the top, we've come into the workshop, we've gotten started, we reflect on our accomplishments, we review our disappointments, we gather lessons learned, we get our guidelines, and then I'll show you how it formulates. So as you keep carrying, during, carrying on in the workshop, it populates your answers into a one-page plan. By the end of the day, you'll have a new paradigm You'll have your major focus, whether it is business owner, uh, mentor to your staff, mentor to the community, based on what you have written. And then what are your top 10 goals? And then every month you'll have an opportunity to write what are the things you need to do towards each goal. Just give me one second. Let me make sure that SBM Bank is here. Uh, is the membership program still on? Yes, the membership program is very on. We have an onboarding happening on Monday the 30th online. Because it's an online system, we don't have to meet anywhere. We can still carry it. If you'd like to know more about it, please call Cynthia and she'll, or you can, you can call me directly. Here is my number. And I can answer you, or you can call Cynthia. And Cynthia's number is that, and ask her, to ask her to share more about it. So, tell, so that's what happens. So I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to go to the portal and uh, let me just make sure, I didn't see if uh, Margaret uh, Kimani from SBM Bank, if you're in the room, please let me know by raising your hand so that I can hand over to you. All righty. I don't see a Margaret Kimani. So while we continue to wait for SBM Bank, I can entertain you a little bit more. So I'll show you. So once you have done your plan inside the system, you can go in and this is, um, let me show you this one. So the first part is you do the plan and then you get your one, your, like this is a, this is a plan that I help people. Okay, I, I didn't have, I haven't filled all of it, but I just want to show you once you've entered, let me show you with one that will be more. I have two of them in here that I practice with. Let me show you with this one. So this is one that is done. Give me one minute. I see a chat that could be our guest. Um, all right, Sheila is here. Sheila is our, our center coordinator in Mombasa. You're welcome, Sheila. So this is at the end of the workshop. This is what your plan looks like. Audrey, you have your guidelines. Uh, for this one that I was doing, I said, to be intentional, be relentless, have faith. And the new paradigm is, yes, I can, if in case things are always stopping you. And then these are the 10 goals for the next 12 months. So how do we ensure you achieve them? You come here to monthly. This is inside the system. It is your subscription for the year. And that the 72,000 goes towards paying this subscription and paying for the membership, all right? And other admin costs in fashion profit. So. We do, when we come to enter monthly goals, you look here, you know, to earn 10 million a month, what, is that, what are some things that you must do in the next 30 days? So for this plan, we say define streams of revenue. You had earlier somebody talked about commission. Maybe you want to work part-time somewhere. You want to speak. Like for me, because I have different speaking engagements, that is what I would list here. 
Uh, goal number two is get out of debt. Do you even know how much you owe? And friends, owing somebody is not the end of the world. We even saw in the Bible when, where the widow owed somebody and the, the prophet, somebody came to take her son. And please hear me well. I'm not saying that you should owe people. When you owe people, you need to have a plan to pay. I find that SMEs lack compassion when it comes to debt. We talk about each other badly. We pull each other down. We have absolutely no compassion. Sometimes life gets difficult and somebody can owe. As long as they're showing willingness to pay, be patient and see if they will pay or not. Because everybody is going to owe because we are looking for investors. We are looking for banks to lend us money. You're going to owe. So we need to have a very healthy relationship with debt and stop looking at people that owe like they're, they, they're sinners. They're not. <laughs> All right. China owes money. Kenya owes money. America owes a lot of money. All right. And they're still asking for more money. Anyway, so this is how you, so we'll go into it and, you know, you keep asking what are the different things that you need to do every month. Every month, every 30 days, you meet with your mentor and your mentor looks at what did you achieve the last month and what are you planning to achieve the next month? Where do you need help? Help could look like you need an accountant to help you do an audit. Help could look like you need an HR person to audit your staff, all right? So you get that help. So please understand that extra help may cost you money because you're only paying 6,000 a month for the coaching and the guidance. I find that SMEs want one price fits all. You can't grow your business like that. That is not how corporates are growing. So I hope that this has answered your question. When I look at my time, I see it is 9.44. So I'm going to answer any other questions that are there. Audrey, I hope I answered your question. So I've done a demo. And uh, you can get this video to watch the demo. And we are coming to the end of our session. And uh, this is the other person that talked about the money. I answered that question. So I'm going to stop the screen share. And I'll have any other questions. In case you have any other question, you can ask. Well, I, let me check here and see if uh, our guest is here. Uh, you can give us feedback. How did you find it? Was it helpful for you? Uh, what other topics would you like to hear? And then uh, we'll take it from there. Uh, uh, so I, it, has gone, it has worked well. And that's the good thing about conversation. We just keep carrying on. So I've been able to show you what the, what the association is about. And in case you, uh, you stepped in late, I'll show you our four key focus areas. Our four key focus areas are here. Um, there's a hand up here. Let me see. Thanks for sharing about the membership, the screen sharing helps. Absolutely. Okay, the title of the book on profit again. Here is the title of the book. Somebody wants to know the title of the book. Thank you so much for attending. Even as we get ready to wind up, as we're winding up, uh, this is the title of the book, Profit Fast. And we call it Profit Fast Philosophy by Mike. And uh, it espouses that sales minus profit equals expenses. You need to use smaller plates, which we call smaller accounts. You can have a twin account. Change your meal sequence. Don't put all the money in one account and then have big portions. Uh, change your meal sequence. As the money comes in, send it to the smaller accounts. Remove temptation. Leaving the money in the account can tempt you to do something that you can, you know, delay gratification for. Build a rhythm, know when to pay bills. One of the rhythms we have built at Passion Profit is that payments are done every Tuesday. So if you need money, you must make sure that your payment, you do a payment, uh, you do a cash request on, uh, you do a cash requisition on Monday so that the cash is uh, gotten for you, the payment voucher is done. Then on Tuesday, because on Tuesday we normally have a staff meeting, we do a debrief, we plan for Thursday, you get your money. So you build a rhythm and that is something we can help you with when you are working with you. Why do we work with you for 12 months? We are really working with you for 12 months because business is a journey. It's not a one size fits all. Once you do your one day workshop, then we are better able to assist you every month to achieve the goals you want for the next 12 months in a very measurable way that we can get feedback and you can know how you're doing. 
I see a hand over there, one second. I'm coming. All right. Kindly restate the four principles on money. I was temporarily muted and only got impactful legacy. All righty. The four principles, this four, the four principles of profit first is what we have on the screen. The four principles, these are the four principles here. Uh, where is the slide? I'm not sure which one you're asking, DP, and um, let me see here. These are the four key focus areas that we mentor people on. For the 12 months, these are the four areas that we look at when we're with you. Personal leadership, profit literacy, impactful legacy, so that your business can live beyond you, network leverage, so that you can have healthy relationships. People have a lot of heart toxic, uh, toxins, <laughs> toxicity, I don't know how to say that word, a lot of negative emotions that is really blocking their progress. A lot of unnecessary hate. There are just some people you see and you don't want to see them again. I mean, what is that? <laughs> but anyway, so we help you through all that. And then um, let me, I see another question here. Okay. So how do you convince investors, <laughs> I like that, to give you salary if the business is not yet making a profit as you work on the business? Thank you very much for that question. Anonymous attender. Now, you cannot, let's say, we cannot convince an investor to give you money to pay your, to, to pay your salary, all right? An investor is somebody who is leveraging their money with your business to make more money. Before they can give you money, you need to be access to capital ready. And what that means, your business needs to show that it has a vision, how it's going to live when you are not around. It needs to show that it has been in existence, generating cash flow and that the people operating it are qualified to operate it and are being paid a salary. Then the investor will feel safe to put more money into it. Otherwise, you cannot convince. It's not about convincing an investor or persuading them. It's about showing them the facts. This is the business. This is what we sell. This is the solution we are providing. This is how many people that exist that need it. For instance, when we are speaking to an investor, we tell them the market is huge. There are more than 17 million SMEs and statistics show us that less than 80% are going to make it to their third birthday. These people need help and we exist to help them so that we can change that statistic. That is how you speak to an investor. Why does your business exist? What is the solution you are providing? How many people need that solution and are willing to pay for it? So how much more money do you need and why do you need it and how are you going to use it and how will he, the investor get some more plus profit, which is interest, all right? I hope that is, a, at Passion Profit, we believe in simplicity. So we keep it very simple so that whether you have a PhD or you have no D behind your name, you can get it, all right? Thank you so much. Clara says, thank you so much for this session. Kindly share your thoughts in regards to this period where businesses are affected with coronavirus outbreak, especially those in service industry like mine, events management. Clara, thank you so much for that question. The first thing is you need to always define who you are in the, apart from the masses. Define who you are in this coronavirus time. What solution can you provide? I'm in the service industry. And I've decided that I'm going to continue speaking because that is what we do. So we are continuing to help people. We are not saying, oh, Corona, even in the midst of Corona, people exist and they need help. And that's why we say we need to look under your skin and see what other things can you do? What solutions can you provide in every season? Because God knew that Corona was going to come here. He did not plan for anyone to sleep hungry. It is the people that have not planned how to use their time and talent to always get treasure. So we cannot blame Corona, number one. It is a very sad thing. Number two, don't put yourself with the masses and hear what everybody else is saying. There are people making money in this season. Yesterday, I was doing a value map proposition for one of my clients in the IT industry, and we quickly saw packages they can do for SMEs in this season because of working remotely. 
So don't put yourself with the mountains and think, oh, woe is me. No, 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 no. War is not you. As long as you're still alive, you have time and, you're, and something under your skin. God has your back. Just figure out how you need to solve somebody else's problem and there'll be food at, on your table and money in your impressor. <laughs> All righty. Thank you so much, guys. We have seven more minutes and I'm really sorry that, um, let me see, that SDM Bank have not been able to join us. Let me see here. He says, um, let us know, okay, uh, let me see here. Let us know how to join the association. Joining the association is simple. I will show you just now. That's a very good question. Thank you. You simply go to our website and I actually had it up here. And it's even good. Audrey, you asked a question, you know, how do we join? Uh, what do we get for joining? One of the things you get is a 12-month mentor, structured mentorship using a coaching system to help you measure and monitor the results that you want to achieve. The other thing you get is access, you get visibility on our website. If you look on the screen, uh, let me stop share and then share again as we wind up here. I've just received one from SBM Bank that Margaret will not be able to join us but they will probably come next week. Next week, we are going to have our accountant here also sharing with you how to do your target allocation percentages from your revenue so that you can, you can divert money into the four accounts. But while I'm doing that, this is our website. I actually signed in as a member. If you look up here, you see home, then you'll see our team. You can do this during your time because time is up. The one I really want you to see is the membership directory. When you're a member, you get, you get to, you can get, you log in, you have your login here. Uh, I'm trying to be careful because I don't want to lose this page. Uh, okay, so there we go. So in the membership directory, if somebody comes to our website, uh, these are tests. This is Jacqueline, our IT assistant. This is a member, and this is me trying to figure out how the system works. These are people that signed up when we hadn't, you know, when I had, we hadn't closed the login because you have to pay before you can sign up here. So they're lucky, but they will be soon cleaned out. That's our website developer. And of course, that is me, member number one. So once you become a member, you also, you get your own login and you have access to a membership portal, which is still growing. You'll notice here we have general videos. You'll have news, events, different articles. You can also, you know, participate in that. But this is closed only for members. I have signed in. That's why you can see this to show you. And then you'll see there are videos in here. There's, right now, there's Money Making Dynamics. This is a video series that I did. And people paid to access it. As a member, you will get it free. And many other videos that we have done for free, you will get here. And then news and events, you haven't started populating because it's a work in progress. And then the other thing is how do you get... You can, how do you sign up? You just come here and you look at uh, membership. And when you click membership, uh, I'm also still learning to it. When you click membership, uh, you can sign up here to receive a newsletter when one comes available. When we started, we're going to have three kinds of membership, but we still will. But the main one is a cent, the one you pay 6,000 a month to join. There's a 5,000 one-time registration. And this 5,000 is in the 72,000. And all you need to do is call the office or send your money on m -Pesa. Now we have up to 300. And uh, the number to call is 0707-112-002. And if you're going to join this month, we have a, we have a workshop. You know, the one-day workshop is happen, happening on the 30th. You'll get to join in that workshop so that you can get on your way to, you can get on your way to, to start uh, delivering the results that you want. I hope I have answered your questions. So you can go to our website, you can call the office. Right now we have not automated the, eventually you're going to be able to come to the website, click on the link, pay by m -Pesa, and then you're just called to come for the one day workshop. It's all a work in progress and uh, we are getting there. All right, I'm so glad that today I was able to show you all this stuff. I see a couple of questions. I have three more minutes. I'll answer these questions. If you need to jump and go, I'll, I'll respect that. You will get an automated email. 
if you use the right email address and uh, you will, this recording will be in there. So let me see, there's some questions here. Okay, I've answered Clara. Susan says, we offer training to organizations and individual. Will it be insensitive to push training when we are going through a negative economic period? Absolutely no. We are not pushing training. We are providing support because as long as COVID remains, we cannot hide ourselves because COVID is around. For instance, we are going to have webinars to help people. We have a webinar on Monday to help people through that, uh, through the, what, what do we call it? Triumphing through times of trouble, how to deal with times of trouble. We are going to have webinars to help people. You see, that is how we sabotage ourselves. We see that there's a problem, so we are being insensitive. The truth of the matter is bills are never insensitive unless the government puts a hold on it. But your bills will still be waiting for you. It's a good downtime to plan, to reflect, and to learn, especially because we are not allowed to travel. So it's a great time to get training despite what is happening. Because some one way or another life needs to get on. And then Audrey says, can we pay the program on a monthly basis? No, we cannot because we are not debt collectors. And when we did the program and had people pay monthly, we have to keep following them up. And that's an extra admin tax. If you go out and look at coaching, coaching starts anything from 12,500 a month. And that's really the low end, 25,000 a month, 50,000 a month. But we have done all we know to do to bring it to you at 6,000 a month. And if you open an account with SBM Bank, SBM Bank, and terms and conditions apply, of course, can help you pay the 72,000 and you pay SBM Bank monthly over a period, I think, of eight or 10 months, all right? So the first thing, if you want to do monthly payment, make sure you open up an SBM Bank in your branch. Let me know that you have done that and you want to, to get the system, I'll find, to get into the system, I'll ask them what you need to do. But I'm sorry, at the moment, we are not accepting monthly because we are going to fall short in our operational expenses and to pay. And we don't want to start asking people for money. We want when you come into the room, we are mentoring you, we go away. Let me see, there's another question. Will I be handled as an individual through the 12 month program or I will be put in a, in a class always? Now, a class is where you have a teacher teaching you new concepts. This is a mentorship, it's a coaching. And in a coaching scenario, you have peers that you're working with. So you will have 10 to 12 people and you have your mentor working with you on your system. You're able to send email and ask for help. So it's really how you work the system. So we have the system. One, you come for a workshop and in the workshop, you're not alone because it will not be 6,000. It will be too expensive for you. So you will work with a small group of 12 people, but you have your own system. The system I was showing you will be your login and your mentor's login. So when you have the when you have the 90 minute review with peers, you can also access your mentor on his or her own. So all that is dependent on how you work it. So you must be proactive, but the key thing is you must engage with your system, all right? Because that is where you write your goals, where you're grading yourself to see what you're doing. I hope that answers your question, Audrey. And thank you very much, people. With that, we come to the end of our session today. What are the next steps? Start a relationship with SBM Bank. Secondly, start a relationship with us. If you want more structured help, this was our conversation. Like I said earlier, our conversation is where two or more people exchange ideas. This is not a class, it's not a workshop, it's not a training. So if you feel that the concepts are too small for you or you want bigger things, there is room for bigger, join the association. All right. And uh, let me see. If you're still there, we are not debt collectors indeed. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's 10 or 2. I'll respect your time and say bye-bye for now. If you need more help, uh, engage with us on our WhatsApp groups. I'm in all the WhatsApp groups. You can side chat me. Our center ambassadors are there to help you. We have Daisy at AdLife. We have um, we have Jacqueline at Samir. We have uh, <laughs> Lillian at City Center. In Mombasa, Cynthia is handling Mombasa for now and uh, Nakuru is Molly, and we also have our center coordinators 
but the ambassador support you. The center coordinator holds the facility. In Mombasa, we have Sheila, Sheila Toya. In Nairobi, we have Frida at City Center, Maurice at Samia, uh, Melvin at Adelaide, and then we have Lorna in Nakuru. And uh, have I left anybody out? I think I've covered them all. So thank you so much to SBM Bank. SBM Bank has made us grow five times overnight. And thank you so much for joining and trusting us uh, as we try to keep you safe and healthy and also help you to grow and succeed. That is all for today. Bye-bye and God bless you. Uh, I see some chats here. Let me make sure. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wow, wow, wow. See you all next week, same time. Bye.